All right. Um, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> uh, thank you for um, hopping into another one of my videos. Um, I waited so long for this deck and I just wanted to see if I would um, just explore the deck with you and just go into, I guess, a bit of a deep dive into the images that are displayed on this deck. Um, this is Man Manzel's Tarot. Manzel is an Afrofuturist um, artist uh, who I, by my assumption, specializes in um, digital collage as his main, um, I guess, medium of art. A lot of what you'll see on his Instagram page and website are just these fantastic images of, of um, space and the universe and also this vastness of terrain um, mingled with African mythological um, images. And so I don't know where I first um, saw that this existed. I want to say, oh my gosh, where was it? Was it on Instagram or something or someone's video? But the moment I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so great. But I was also still in that like, oh, I'm buying too many decks. <laughs> brain and I think at that time it was $100 was the deck and I was like there's no way I, I can't I can't do that and I think it was even sold out um and so I just kind of like forgot about it and then I believe I was watching Catamancy Tarot's video I love her channel by the way um and her cute little kitty um, and she had received a deck, a Mansell's Tarot deck secondhand um, and was doing a, a, a walkthrough of it. And um, I was like, who, let me see. I said, let me just check. Let me just peep his website real quick. And for sure, he had listed that the deck was back in stock and this time for $75. And he also announced it on his Instagram page. So I was like, okay, I guess this is my chance, you know. And, you know, I, so a lot, I put a lot of my the expensive decks that I buy, I put them on like, I guess, well, I call it layaway. Y'all might call it uh, like afterpay or, you know, those four pay and four plans. I tend to do that sometimes with, um, with decks that are, um, that should be out of my price range, <laughs> but I'm getting them anyway. Um, so I went ahead and ordered it. And uh, I will say that the purchasing experience um, was not optimal. Um, it took a really long time for me to get this deck. And even so, I didn't receive um, a shipping uh, notification or anything. So I didn't know what was going on. I would try to reach out to the artist and um, about that. And I didn't receive a response. But then randomly one day, uh, up popped this deck. And so I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> sigh of relief. Um, and so it took me a while to start bonding or connecting with this deck just because of those anxieties. I, I just, I, for me, I, when I, when I speak about tarot and the, 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 and collecting decks, um, a lot of my experience with the deck also includes what it's like to obtain the deck. And so I hold a lot of that energy in and so I feel like I needed to like take a minute and and you know let it just let it sit until I felt better <laughs> um I forgot all about the weird purchasing experience um but I flipped I of course had unpackaged it I flipped through it I actually used it a few times I put it back in order because I wanted to go through each card in order with you all and um yeah so let's see what is going on so what i didn't realize was that this what i received was actually the first edition um of his uh deck there's a second edition 
that I think was on Catamancy Tarot's channel, or at least not Janaki, <laughs> Janaki's Tarot uh, channel. Um, and so this is the first edition. Uh, there's a second edition, and then there's a second edition that is holographic. I, for some reason, I thought I would be getting the second edition holographic version just based on the images um, of uh, his. Um, of his website, the listing on his website, but that is not the case. So let me just take a sip of water. This thing, wonderful. Okay, so already we're starting off strong. <laughs> um, I love. Uh, this whole card um i and i've seen a couple of iterations of this from a couple of decks that i actually already have and i think i'm going to make a video just talking about learning my own tarot aesthetic like what i'm attracted to in a tarot deck and just some um themes that have been arisen in the collection that i currently have but um there is this image that i've come across of uh basically the fool just having a brain or a head that is full of just different mix matched chaotic material and so for me how i register that is you know when you are first starting out you know on your spiritual journey on your spiritual path it is going to be confusing you're going to want to go this direction and that direction every which way you're going to be overwhelmed with thoughts and feelings and emotions. And so that's kind of what the sense that I'm getting here is that at the beginning of our journey, things are not clear. Things are as complex and, and as confusing and overwhelming as ever. And so, of course, as we, you know, continue on our paths, things get just a little bit sharper, you know, a little bit more, more in perspective. And so, so I really think this um, full card is really cool. The Magician, I love this card. Um, <laughs> of course, you have your, you know, the handling of the tools, you know, your wands and your coins. I don't, is there a sword? Um, I don't see a sword, there's probably some in there. But what I do see is faces. You know, and there's it's given me a sense of multiplicity um, with this position of, of being the magician, of being this master manifester, this master worker of magical tools. What roles do we have to play? What roles are necessary for us to put on um, when we when we you know when we go about the act of of doing, of the act of making things real in our lives. So I was a little disappointed because the, in the second edition, um, the high priestess, oh no, no, this wasn't it. I'll get, okay, I'm talking about the empress. I'll get to that later. I like this high priestess. I was a little thrown off because um, I'm, you know, we're used to associating the high priestess with the night and the moon. So I'm thinking like shades of blues and purples and cool tones. And so I thought it was an interesting choice for the artist to have a red fiery background, but you do see some elements of coolness here. You see it in, um, in her neck, you see it in her belly. Um, there's an entrance to the cosmos um, in this area, which I think is really interesting. Usually we associate the high priestess um, with a secret knowledge. And so that would kind of, I would, would go here. And we do see some elements of having um, astral um, materials and matter in the headspace throughout this deck. So um, I was expecting it maybe if you were to do something like this, that it would be here in the head. Um, but I do like that it's in the belly because, you know, for me, the belly is like, um, it seems more intuitive, intuition. And so I really like the aspect. And of course, the many arms, um, the many ways of knowing, the many ways of being. Um, 
is there. I just love like the way he puts together these 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 um these figures. Very regal, very cosmic. Now, this is what I was going to say about the Empress. In the second edition, the Empress is blue and of three faces. And I love that aspect of a triune goddess. I'm actually working or thinking about, I'm in grad school full time, and I'm thinking about exploring Black women's identity through the triune um, goddess archetype. And so I was really excited, hoping that I would get the second edition so that I could have the Empress. Um, the Empress is also... Uh, my birth card so i tend to um and i'll probably do a video on this as well as far as how i know like what's the card that that sold you on a deck and it's always i always look to the empress it's like the card like okay the empress better be the bomb <laughs> or i'm not getting this deck i still love this empress however um uh again you know there's there's um the red cloak is giving me something. There's a still mask right here at her chest. I'm curious about the eyes um, and the fluidity of matter that is going around on her head and her shoulders. Is there a burden there? Is there stress there? Is there responsibility there? Um, the Empress tends to, for me, tends to represent a force of will, um, to will something. And so I do get some of those vibes there. And of course, you have this single um, star here. And you'll see that throughout this deck, I think. Um, just for me, it denotes direction. There's a way. There's a way through, um, which I think is cool to have over the emphasis head. Ooh, baby. This emperor is no freaking joke. It kind of reminds me of Thanos or something, like some Marvel, <laughs> some Marvel villain. Um, I don't have much to say about the emperor except that it's giving definite emperor vibes. I find it curious because I feel like, um, you know, when it comes to different, like, you know, interpretations of the empress or the juxtaposition between the Empress and the Emperor. Um, and now that I'm looking at them, I might want to take back what I was about to say. But sometimes there's some decks, especially in the Marseille style, that the, you can tell that the Empress is the neck that, um, that turns the head. But here, this is real, it's giving me real, like, patriarchy. <laughs> Give me real, like, whoa, we are getting, like, this is, you know, Ma like masculinity like straight up um which you consider like divine masculinity here but it doesn't make the empress any weaker i guess now that i'm looking at them side by side i think one thing about this deck that maybe i would love to see in a later iteration is interaction between um between the, the figures you know are they looking at each other? Are they looking away? Are they to the side? Everyone is always facing you, so it's very imposing. Each character is super imposing because of that direction um, of the figure. The higher offense. Clearly, he knows the way. He knows the path. Are you willing to go through that door with him and open your eyes? Was that a moon? It looks like a moon figure behind him. So make, making the unknown clear. I'm not sure what these two serve here. Maybe a duality. You know, what are the risks and the benefits through this path? I freaking love this lover's card. I'm going to put this aside because I have something to say about the two of cups when we get to it. But I just like, these are lovers, you know? They're lovers among stars. It's like such a beautiful, beautiful image. Um, however, because they're facing a different, um, 
direct or they're facing the same direction rather um it seems like there's there's no we're missing the the aspect of choice in this card which i think is very important for the lover's card to include um so the fact that they're facing you know not they're not facing towards each other but they're facing in the same direction however you could interpret this card as being you know I think it's a comforting card in that no matter what choice you make, you're going to be okay. Everything, you know, there's, there are many paths uh, to Rome, as they say. And so, you know, no matter what path you take, there's only one way, there's only one destination you can end up, maybe. I don't know. Chariot, love it. Not much to say here. I just love the palette. I love the galaxy colors in the background. And, you know, this is a really good example of um, the aspects of Afrofuturism. A lot of people assume that it's just Black people in the future. <laughs> but what I find through Afrofuturist aesthetics is that you are imagining the future by returning to elements of the past. So you have this very, like, arcane kind of dais or, or um, throne um, that is thrust into space, but it's a very old and ancient object um, that you're placing it within a very futuristic scene. So I just wanted to point that out. Man, let me tell you, when I saw the strength card, I just, I just sighed because it is so beautiful. So beautiful. This is for me, I think, captures a lot of what the strength card means for me personally. There's a vulnerability here. And it's not that, you know, this child is trying to wrestle or wrangle or get under control this, you know, this um this predator, right? But rather like Rather, they are working together. They're bringing each other something, some peace, some comfort. There's vulnerability, that's, that's your protection, that's your shield. And then for that person or that <laughs> creature, this is their comfort, this is their purpose. Like they're symbiotic, they're, they, they're a team, you know, they're an integration. And I think that's for me what strength, what strength I think, you know, best represents I think I just spilled the water <laughs> the hermit I love this hermit because when you go inside yourself um, all this Brooklyn ambulances. <laughs> um, once you go inside yourself, this is kind of like an illustrated version of like what it feels like, you know, thinking about gravitational pulls, where are you being pulled to? Almost like a rabbit's hole, you know, Alice in Wonderland going down the rabbit's hole. What is going to, you, how are you going to come out on the other side if you're going to come out? There's a risk here, but also an imperative to knowing. Wheel of Fortune. Nothing much to say here. I like the aesthetics. It's not the most compelling card in the deck, but we all know what Wheel of Fortune is. <laughs> Lovely. Justice. Justice will have its day. That's what I get from this card. You can do what you want. There's these two orbs here, two spheres that um, to me represent uh, the two, your, your head, the head and the heart um, that we often see symbols of um, in the Justice card and Tarot. Um, the balance there, but there's an overwhelming like Justice is coming, whether you like it or not. The Hanged Man. 
I love this version. I think in the second edition, correct me if I'm wrong, if you have the second edition, but the hangman is in this position, but um, is uh, in space space. But here, I love that they're dangling in the atmosphere. There's, again, you know, we always see versions of the hangman and he's hanging upside down, but he's straight chilling. <laughs> but this is like unnerving. And I think for me in my path, and this is also my second birth card, um, it can be either 12 or three. Um, so it's like if you add one plus two together, it makes three. And so for me in my personal journey, it's hard to, to upend your, your thinking, to think in different perspectives. And it's risky because it means if you think in another way, then you, then you have to act in another way. You have to make different choices than what you're used to. And that can be unnerving, you know, so I appreciate. And also, too, I'm curious about, like, there's the clouds are above and not below. You know, so what do these clouds represent for the hanged man in this position? The fact that you are higher than the clouds, that this is where you're headed. Almost like your arms are reaching out to the clouds. Reaching down instead of reaching up. Nothing much to say here. I just love this beautiful death card. And it has some traditional RWS elements um, with the sunrise in the background. So it's really cool. And also very peaceful. It's, it's giving me good vibes, not scary vibes. You know, I don't know. Maybe the glowing eyes scare people. But yeah, it's like a reassuring scene for me. I just love this temperance card. I love the semblance of symmetry, of absolute beauty. I love it. I wish there was some water in there. <laughs> Can't have everything. Listen, let me tell you, when I first saw this double card, <laughs> I, you know how every time, like if you've done a tar had a tarot reading done for you, or you've done one for others, it's always this gasp when the devil card shows up, because it means like, you know, you in danger, girl, you in trouble, you know, like you really have to get it together. Like this is it, right? But somehow if this card showed up in my reading i'd be like oh daddy what you want <laughs> it's um it's really a sexy card and you know what that's probably what i'd have to reflect on why am i so attracted to this card and i need to rethink that attraction right because it's the devil it's the devil it's meant to attract and seduce and so there has to be some resistance in here that i have to reflect on tower so this is not the first type of um portrayal of the tower that i've seen but i love it every time i see it of you know the tower is happening in your headspace um the conflict is in your headspace and the growth that needs to happen uh begins in your headspace and i think too it the tower asks us to challenge um our perspective you know what is calamity could actually be opportunity for growth, for new opportunities, for positive change. I love this star. It reminds me of, um, I don't know if y'all, if you're into film, but there's an old tiny black and white movie. Was it in the 1930s or 1920s called Metropolis? And this figure reminds me of the, um, the android in that movie. And I love the single star. I think that these are waves underneath. So just the element of water and the, the immersion. Uh, there, it seems like she's surrounded by water. She may be made of water. Yeah. moon 
enough said. I just love this imagery of delineating from what is what we know versus what we don't know. And then there's a seductiveness of the dangling of the moon, a desire, um, desire to know what is hidden. Um, <clears throat> it took me a while to see all the elements in the sun card when I first looked at it, but if you notice that there's a bunch of people um, down in the ground and having this person, you know, walking in the sun, walking down these beautiful pastures, it's like, you could say, oh, he's walking his own path and he's fine. But also the fact that he's walking towards this community, I think, says a lot of beautiful things as well. This judgment card is the bomb. Like, you better level up or die. Like, that's what this card is giving me. <laughs> level up or die. There's just such immense pressure here to get your ish together, to tap into that higher self. Because that higher self believes in you and has expectations of you to fulfill your purpose in the universe. The world. I find myself through most decks a little disappointed in world cards. Um, but I do think it's interesting here that, you know, the world is seems to be the center of this universe um, based on the lines, um, the gravitational lines here. Um, but also that this statuesque woman literally, or figure rather, is holding um, this baby. So what does the baby represent? The baby represents future and possibility, you know? Cool. Ace of Wands, I am not a fan of um, figures in the Ace suits or the Ace cards, um, but I think it's cool that this person is really the personification of a whole planet, <laughs> and the wand is his power. And interesting that the skull is here. I'm still thinking about what that skull could, could mean in the scene of this card. Two of Wands. We have our element of choice here. Should I or shouldn't I? Um, I think choice here <clears throat> in his deck is delineated with red and blue, almost like a red pill, blue pill. Three of Wands. I love the stateliness of each wands, but there's this wand here that is the most stately, and I love that there's a single star that's giving us a sense of direction. We know now where we're supposed to go. We just have to go. Four of Wands. A little pipish. I think there's a lot you'll see some more pipishness, pipishness <laughs> in this deck. Um, but I love that it's giving symmetry and balance. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel secure. It makes me feel stable. Five of Wands. I don't know if you can tell, but I think they're both holding two. He's just holding it as a cross. So there's um, a sense of, um, you know, like competition. There's a sense of conflict here still. There's a swan on the ground. So who's going to get that? Is that what they're fighting over? There's two um, faint moons in the distance. So there are things that we don't know about the other. Are there things that we don't know about ourselves in this situation? 
And is that what's causing conflict? Six of Wands. She's standing high above the rest. She's absolutely beautiful. And she's balancing everything that she was meant to balance. She's carrying everything that she was meant to carry. And there's a confidence here because her back is to us. She's not concerned about us at all. Seven of Wands. This woman is stressed. <laughs> this woman is stressed. She's been fighting so hard. Maybe her whole life. And she is tired, but she is alert. She is still ready. But I want her to find some rest. And also, she's on stable ground. Look at that rocky surface. It's not going anywhere. Eight of Wands. Interesting, because... We think of Eight of Wands as movement. And um, this person looks like they're not going anywhere. But also, on the same token, it could also be that they have a position, they have a destination, and they are not wavering from that destination. They are not waving from that path. You cannot change their mind. They know exactly where they're going to go, and you can't stop them. Their mind is made up. So it could be read that way, maybe. Nine of Wands. Ugh. Let me see here. Are they reading? Oh, my glasses. <laughs> Some of these figures are so tiny. Um, but they're working. They're hard at work. There's one one that is bigger than the rest it's, that's right behind them. So they have what it takes to get it done. It's just, and I find it interesting that, you know, they're sitting, but this huge stack, this huge wand behind them is still standing straight. So it's like, even though you want to rest, there's something in you that keeps you standing tall. Ten of Wands, very RWS, carrying the load home, looking tired. <laughs> it's been a long day. You just need to get home and put off your shoes and lay this burden down. There's water behind, I think. Or maybe is that a desert landscape? It's hard to say because it is blue. Hmm. Page of Wands. <laughs> I love this Knight of Wands, and I love the Knight of Wands at dusk. You can see the flame um, associating the element of fire above their head. Yeah, uh, and the hearts, because we know what Knight of Wands could be about, and I love reading. Let her watch them. A queen of wands. Oh my gosh. Do not mess with her. Do not mess with her. I'm, get, I'm getting all powerful. I'm getting master manifester. I'm getting... Yeah. Don't cross her. I love the blue figures. Oh, the king of wands. <laughs> you, you can move planets. You are a planet, sir. <laughs> You are energy. You have what it takes. You are what it takes. Cups. You got your big old, big old goblet. I love these goblets. This man showing the size of scale. See, I love this. I, I would like this as far as if you have any figures and a suits. Make them little. Little itty bitty. So here's what, oh, I forgot to keep the, the lover's card out, but here's what I'm saying about the Two of Cups. I am not really getting, I think it's interesting that they chose to not have two figures um, in here, but instead 
chose two goblets and of course we have the red the red and the blue to denote choice i probably would have liked to see something like this in the major arcana the lover's card and then what was in the lover's card as two of cups um but uh you do have your two stars here so that could also be representative of spirits connecting and of course kind of pointing in the same direction yeah but i I've, i'm i'm struggling with this card three of cups it's not giving party vibes <laughs> it's not giving celebration vibes um this is an example of why I probably wouldn't have put a, a small figure to, to have the scale of size. This seems very lonely and very overwhelming. And so I'm having trouble. I think this is where this is too pippish for this scene. But as long as I have my own knowledge of, of what the Three of Cups means to me, I think I'll be okay. I do love that the cup, you know, cups do represent, aside from feelings and emotions, but generally, like, outside of Tarot Lands, you know, cups do represent cele celebration and revelry. So the fact that there is a huge cup here, I think, can still denote some positivity and some levity. But with the mountainous landscape, I am not so sure. Four of Cups stop i don't want enough i need to know i'm doing something to learn more maybe i should do something to learn more to see more who knows <laughs> i love this five of cups but here's the interesting point usually the person in five of cups or the figure in five of cups is looking at the cups that have fallen and the cups that are still upright are behind them, or they can't see them or they're not looking at them. But here we have the dog who's looking at these two cups. So here's my theory. My theory is that this is a scene after the cups have fallen and the dog turns around and um, has found these two cups upright. Because you see here, there's some element of water here, which is usually in front of the figure. So, the, so it almost is like, he was looking towards the water and then had to turn around and discover these cups, which gives me a sense of, you know, we saw the despair, but here's the hope here in this picture, very clearly, in my opinion. And I love the doggy. Six of Cups. This reminds me of, <laughs> I hate to say it, but it reminds me of, Black Panther, and I don't know if y'all saw the Marvel movie, but the scene where they go into the ancestral realm. So this reminds me of like ancestral energy here. And the fact the Six of Cups, you know, reminiscence going into the past, you know, discovering, discovering yourself there, I think could be a part of the dominant um, energy of this card as it's depicted. Seven of Cups, you have your choice. The fact that you're just a ball of, I don't know, your sphere, <laughs> maybe could indicate some confusion, some cloudiness, some lack of direction here. Eight of Cups, I really like this. I really like this. I... I had something to say and then I was like, I'm not sure <laughs> if it's right. But the fact that this is just all water here, it's, you know, giving like you've had you it's full. You have all you had all the water that you that you need, but you don't need it anymore. And so now you have this path through. But the fact that he's sitting above. It's like there's a choice here. 
of do you walk through? Are you like, it's like he's at an impasse almost, which is not very Eight of Cups-ish, but could be a definite take of someone who's wrestling with letting go of, of relationships and needs to see this image here of like, this is where you could go, but you just have to take it. The path is laid out for you. There's nothing more here. There's just, what, you know, you've, you've gotten your fill here, you know? And so this is a meditative space maybe. Or maybe this is the person inviting you in. Nine of Cups, all of these beautiful goblets are surrounded. There's abundance here. Look at the stars are shining so bright for you in this lovely night. Ten of Cups, sir, you are, you are a cup. <laughs> oh my gosh, you are a cup, sir. You are a cup. <laughs> let me stop let me stop playing again we have the sense of abundance here i love i like different takes on cups that don't necessarily um denote like family like it just can denote happiness of course we have our rws um nod with the rainbow but you are so full right now love this page of cups the fact that this goblet is bigger than the figure in the page, I think, says a lot of the, not necessarily immaturity of the page, but just the, maybe there's a sense of not being able to handle emotions or still learning your way of navigating emotions and, and things like that. Knight of Cups. Even though we're in the cup suits, that knight ugh, loves that fiery. Fiery, 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 fiery. This is giving maybe passion. Um, yeah, I like it. I love this. This is our first, maybe first kind of black and white image. Here we have the woman, Queen of Cups, facing her goblet. She is made of space. <laughs> and then we have a second head. On top of her head that is looking up to the sky so she is getting power from somewhere something or she is giving it maybe she's giving it maybe this is what she's emitting to the world and i love the starkness of this yellow it's a very refreshing take um after so many galaxy or galactic um galactic images King of Cups, he's just basking in it, he's sitting in it, <laughs> he's bathing in it. <laughs> is this an egg or a globe? Oh, this is a globe. Yeah. Swords. Two of Swords, I love this because you have this directional point here with the single star center, but there's something blocking you from getting to where you're going. You can't decide. Um, but once you, decide, once you do decide, I feel like these swords will get out of your way so you can go ahead and do what you gotta do. Three of Swords, I love this because the human figure, even though that is a human figure, um, they do resemble the heart itself, just in the red um, garments and the red head. But the human, is, the human is being harmed. So when we think about, you know, Three of Swords, and we always get that image of the heart being pierced. But really, I think grief is a whole body experience. Every part of ourselves grieves, you know. When we think about our emotional space, um, it, it does talk to our physical space. It really does. Four of Swords. I've seen this. I feel like, you know what? A part of me wants to go back. I wish I still had the, well, I don't, but if I still had the Radiant Wilds Tarot, I returned it, and maybe I'll make a video about why I returned it someday. Um, I feel like this image was used in that. So maybe it's a common uh, open license image to use, but 
But anyway, it's giving off meditative vibes, restful vibes. There's a stillness, a stability here. Wow, Five of Swords is looking a lot like some Seven of Swords. But, oh, we have the skull. I mean, it's like, what are you doing? Why are you still doing this? Your opponent is dead. Really consider your actions here. You're doing too much. <laughs> I love the Six of Swords because it makes you think, is this, <clears throat> is this person coming or approaching? and saying hello and greeting um, what we see in, in the background, or are they saying goodbye? And I think depending on the context of the reading, you could go either way. What are you heading towards, or what do you need to leave? Is the perspectives, the two perspectives you can take here. Here we go, our Seven of Swords, very crafty looking very strategic. I think I do like this take on the Seven of Swords because it says, it's not saying that some, it's giving more so Seven of Swords from your perspective as the querent of, you know, what do you need to do to, to get through a situation, to survive a situation, as opposed to someone's doing this behind your back and someone did it. I mean, it could be that way as well, but I think it's more so this is querent focus, querent as subject. eight of swords there's a blockage here but it's not giving me a sense of whether i mean you can escape <laughs> these swords look huge but you can still walk through them if you wanted to it just looks like it's the blockage is 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 monumental but because they're so huge you can literally just walk through it's just intimidating Nine of Swords I'm confused about, but there's a shadowy figure here and looks like they're playing an instrument. And there's these shiny swords in the background that are just like hovering over them. And maybe this means that, you know, this is what it's like as someone who does, has, yes, <laughs> if you've ever had anxiety or you live with anxiety um, disorders, um, this is what living every day is like. You're doing the work. Um, you're doing what you do, you're living your life, but over your head, it's always some matter of stress, always some worry, always some things keeping you up at night. Just hovering, not piercing, just hovering. Love this Ten of Swords, not much to say here. This is your quintessential RWS depiction of Ten of Swords. But I love that he's not completely on the ground. Eight of Swords. Knight of Swords. I love that um, there's, it looks like there's some space stuff <laughs> coming out of his mouth. Swords, communication. But what are you saying? Are you saying the right words? Are you being careful with what you say? Are you saying things with tact? Or are you just spouting? And he looks like he's in a defensive stance. Like he's a ready to fight stance, like where his sword is drawn. So, yeah, great. Queen of Swords. Oh, I love this. And I love, again, these scenes in the bellies of these women. Such a powerful image. Such a powerful image. For her, the way is clear. She is certain, she's determined, she's confident. King of Swords. The sword is a fire. Oof. Very giving me masculine, patriarchal, <laughs> authoritative. What he says goes. What he says could sting, could hurt, could impact, could influence. Love Ace of Pentacles. I wish there was a book to tell us what the symbols on these pentacles mean, or if the artist was like, oh, this seems cool. Let me, and if you know, let me know. 
maybe he did use this particular coin for a reason and I just don't know the symbol symbology. Two of Pentacles. I'm having a hard time with this one um, because I'm not getting a sense of, it looks like the scene itself is very balanced. Everything's very gr green and lush and peaceful. Um, I am unsure, I'm trying to think of the placement between these two coins. Um, but again, we have um, this panther here, this big black cat that's giving you this ancestral energy. Um, three of pentacles. I like three of pentacles with more than one person working together. Um, but I can see how the three of pentacles can make a callback to like, I guess, industrialness um, or industriousness. Like the, the will to work is in this card. And of course you got your, your coins laid out in a pippish manner. Which is fine. I'm not anti-pip. I, I actually like pips. But, you know, when it comes to a deck like this, when you're you're expecting such vast creativity, you know, then you're like, oh, okay, pips. <laughs> um, Four of Pentacles. You're clinging. You're clinging too tightly. You're clinging too tightly to this one thing. But look what's ahead of you. Look what's uh, above you. If you could let go a little bit, Maybe you can get more than you've ever imagined. Five of Pentacles. Her expression is wanting, but beyond that, I'm not getting Five of Pentacles vibes, but I think that's fine. Six of Pentacles. You're the one with, with abundance. Look at your eyes. Seven of Pentacles. There's a waiting. There's a patience that needs to happen here, or that is happening here. And I think these orbs represent the possibility of what you're going to reap. Eight of Pentacles. You are working up something, girl, and this stew, this universal stew. I love it. You're hard at work. You're mastering your craft. You're doing something that's going to be huge. I don't like this Nine of Pentacles. <laughs> I love to see women in Nine of Pentacles. Um, and I'm sad that I don't get to see it here. And this is giving possibility. But I think Nine of Pentacles is like what's what's already there, you know. This is what you're languishing in. And for, so I don't see abundance yet, but there's a possibility of abundance and soft life. I, I, for me, Nine of Pentacles, and you know, my username is Nine Coins, so I <laughs> clearly love this card, is all about, like for me and my personal journey, you know, living the life that I, that I intend to live right now. Ten of Pentacles legacy family the fact that this person is coming behind this person he's ready to take the mantle page hmm. nights i don't really have a lot to say about the court cards of the pentacles, to be honest. Queen, of course, you have your crystal imagery with the earth. King, he's sitting on a big old fat coin. He's the master of coin. So that concludes... <laughs> my first deep dive into a deck thank you so much for for watching um this is Mansell's tarot i will leave details below i don't know how long it's gonna stay um available on his on his website 
I would say, you know, I would say gently and with love, uh, no shade to the illustrator. But if you do purchase the stack, um, you know, I guess be patient, but he does fulfill his orders. Um, you know, it's just not your typical professional buying experience when it comes to buying decks. Now that I have it in my hand, though, I am so excited to use this deck. This deck asks me to level up. This deck, when it's talking to me personally, it's talking to my higher self. And if I am not at my higher self, I need to get to my higher self to read and understand this deck. This deck wants things and expects the best from me. That's what I'm getting just from this beautiful, like regal, universal galactic energy. Like I am made of star stuff. I need to act like it. I need to act like I'm these people in these scenes, you know? I love it. It's very empowering. Anyway, thank you again, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.